What's going on? Brian Tong here, and welcome to Googleicious for all the Google that we can pack inside of a show. We've talked about Google X and their out there projects. And if you weren't already impressed with our smart contact lenses that can measure glucose levels, well, try this. The Googs is designing magnetic nanoparticles, about 1,000th the width of a red blood cell, to patrol the human body and look for signs of cancer or other diseases. Now, the effort is led by Andrew Conrad, the head of the life sciences team at Google X, and the goal is to get an early heads up on cancer and other diseases, and hopefully gain some insight for more effective treatment as well. It's more than five years off and faces major challenges technically. There's privacy issues with the data they can collect because, come on, it's Google. They collect everything. But there's also regulatory issues if the delivery method is by swallowing a pill. But this is just some of the mind-blowing, amazing stuff that Google is working on right now. Now, in semi-health related news as well, Google recently released their Google Fit app for Android to track your fitness activities like walking and running. It's compatible with smartphones and tablets running Android 4.0 and higher with its nifty material design looking charts and graphs. It also pulls info from third party apps. So if you want to get your fitness on, you can check it out right now. All right, lots of gadgets have been announced recently, including the official unveiling of the Motorola Droid Turbo by Verizon. Now, I could go down the list of specs, but what makes this phone special is its 48 hour battery life based on usage time. This is not just being idle in your pocket. That's 48 hours of usage and it's turbocharging. How about an additional eight hours of juice in just 15 minutes? Now that's something that no one is delivering in smartphones right now. Also, the surprise of the week came from Amazon with their $39 Fire TV video streaming stick that competes directly with the Chromecast and Roku stick. It brings eight gigs of storage and a dual core processor for faster and more fluid navigation, according to the Amazonians. And for $30, you can upgrade the remote to take advantage of their voice search, which is really one of the best I've tried for a set top box. And Prime members also had a limited time to get one for just 19 bucks. All right, jumping over to wearables, AT&T recently announced they will be one of the first US carriers to sell LG's recently announced G Watch R, really the hottest looking Android Wear watch to date now, and I'm sorry, Moto 360. It will start rolling out in the beginning of November in select markets like France, Italy, and Spain. Asia and North America will get it sometime after that. And Android Wear's latest update has begun rolling out for select devices. Some of the new features include offline music support that you can store on your device and listen to it via Bluetooth headphones and speakers. GPS support is now here as well, as long as the hardware supports it. And at this time, it's really only Sony's smartwatch 3 that can be pre-ordered from Verizon's website. And finally, I'm sorry to bring a bit of bad news if you're a Twitter addict and you own Google Glass, so this is for you and yeah, that might be four or five people. Well, according to Glass support, Twitter is no longer developing the app and it no longer shows up in the My Glass app hub. So sure, someone can step in to fill the void, but for now, no more tweets. Aww. All right, that's gonna do it for this week's show. You can always email us at googleicious at cnet.com or tweet me directly at Brian Tong. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you all next time for some more of that Googleicious. Googleicious.